Frodo. Hello, young Jared. It's good to see you back in the in the shires. How are you feeling? A bit better. Still a bit rough. But... You still feeling a bit rough? Yeah. Frodo asked me to come and give you something to help you get better. Now I've got here a little potion for you to take. Let's have a, a little sip of this, and it will help you get better. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome, Jared. I understand that young Komodo dragon is, is not here today. Are you taking care of the snakes in his absence? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I thought we could do today is maybe help you with some um, genetic pairing. Would you like some help from uh, the genetic wizard? For sure. Let's go and have a look and see what we've got. How are the snakes doing, Jared? Yeah. I see you've um, got everything labelled up, ready to go. So just talk me through some of the pairings today, Jared, and see if I can uh, cast my magic I'm not going to talk much because my throat's really sore. Okay. Those top two go together. So we have the Ultramel Titus going to the Coco Mocha. Is this going to possibly be her final lock before she ovulates? You hope so? I hope so too, Jared. Well, since you're not feeling too well, I'll come and give you a hand. Let's have a look at the Waka girl. How's she looking, Jared? Want to have a little look at her? Make sure she's okay? Yes, she looks very nice, Jared. You're doing a great job there, the way you're looking after her and feeding her. By the way, I must have give you my sincere apologies for the loss of your R.I. girl yesterday. I understand that you were ill yourself. Your father tells me that she passed. It's a very sad day. He's asked me also to express my love and appreciation on his behalf to all the wonderful people out there that have given us messages of condolences and they were very well received I understand so a big thank you for, for all those people out there I would almost take my hat off to you but uh, we'll keep it on just for the purposes of the skit is that looking better Jared? yeah I can't really see your face but <laughs> okay so yeah better <laughs> we'll have a hard job trying to get the pipe in but um, I need to blow some bubbles. Okay, so let's have a look at the ultra male, Titus. He looks like he's searching for a female. A good sign, a good sign. Just have a little inspection, make sure he's good to go. No problems. He's been an absolute stud looking after three of our girls this year. And look, he's smelling the vibe. He wants to come out. Let's see if we can... Perhaps if we bring the table along, we can use the table to assist us. Well, come here, young Titus. Oh, you are looking superb. What a beautiful animal, Jared. Now, I understand this is a Mojave and a Ultramel combined, an improving breeder from last year, produced some lovely babies for you, I understand. Well, let's um, see how he is and inspect him. Hey, young Titus. You are very beautiful. Are you ready to go to your mocha girlfriend? She's been waiting all night for you, darling. Yes, let's put him in and make sure he hopefully locks with her one more time. Oh, that's lovely, Jared. Look how he explores her. He's definitely showing a, a great deal of interest in her and we'll let him explore her and uh, we'll come back later to this pairing there you go Hanson in you go my darlings enjoy your final night together now Jared there was another pairing that you wanted me to look at what was the other pairing that you were considering? cinnamon pie cinnamon cinnamon, cinnamon. cinnamon pie I'll just wash my hands. If you want to show everyone the animals we're pairing while I wash my hands, that'd be very much appreciated. Thank you. 
hide his Elvis. I understand that he's all shook up. Oh, magnificent animal. One of my favourites, I must say, Jared. One of my favourites. Right, come on, Elvis. Well, he's uh, expressing his love to me with a hiss rather than a kiss. He's absolutely superb, Jared. And where's the female he's going to? Is this a pairing that we had last year as well? And I understand Sienna is a proven female as yours as well. Let's uh, put them together. There we go, my darlings. Enjoy. Enjoy your time together. Lovely, Jared. And so perhaps you can show the third pairing while I wash my hands again. Joker, who's been a very reliable stud clown male for you. And uh, will he be going to the uh, the young um, spot nose in the hope of producing Batmans? I believe so. Oh, he's magnificent, Jared. What a wonderful animal. Would you mind doing the honours to me? Thank you, Jared. There we go, Joker. Enjoy this beautiful, sexy Lexi. Especially for you. She's shed out. And let's keep those together. And I think that's the three pairings so far, Jared. We normally do about four or five, but I understand you've got a couple of them in shed. So we'll rest them and let them shed out first before we do that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. So I think the next thing I'd like to do, Jared, is just to see how your grow on girls are doing and some of your grow on boys. Would you like to perhaps show us some of your grow ons and we'll have a little weigh and see how they're doing? Self. There we go, let's try that. So we just zero the scales. That's lovely. So who are you recommending first for a review? The pastel lesser clown mango. She does look magnificent, Jared, absolutely. Oh my darlings, let's have a look at you. And I'd like you to guess the weight, Jared. Oh, she's beautiful, Jared. Now, I understand you bought her literally six months ago for about 250 grams she was coming in and you've had her for what six months now would you like to guess the weight hmm. just over a thousand probably I'm gonna say 1100 there we go mango let's see how you're doing 1227 so she's doing fantastic so well done well done mango you are just amazing that's a lot of growth in such a short time and you know just feeding her once a week as well well she's certainly retaining whatever she's putting in and she seems to be very happy here Jared she's progressed nicely into the large rub only been in there a couple of months and doing very well so we'll record her at 1227 Jared so I want you to think carefully about future breeding plans for her who would you like to put her to in the future any thoughts well I was thinking maybe we could bring one of our male clowns into her Perhaps Hercules when he's big enough. And um, are there any other grounds that we'd like to have a look at? Should we stick with the clowns? Because I think there was one clown that I noticed was doing particularly well. And I think her name is Zeno, isn't it? I don't know if I can find her. Um, let's have a look. Is she down here? Here she is. So we should have a look at Zena. Oh, I've noticed you've been doing something, Joe. What's, what's all this, this new hide business going on here? What's the thinking behind the hides? I think actually, um, sorry, Jared, I do know that you're struggling with your voice. Do apologize. Perhaps I'll uh, expand it from your father's perspective. He 
I was putting in some thoughts last night about how he can assist some of the grown snakes to become even more comfortable in their new environment. And uh, we dug out about 30 hides from the house that we had. And uh, we've put them strategically placed at this point where they're now at that critical 1200, 1000 to 1200 grams to make them feel more comfortable to keep them feeding going in anticipation in case they do hit a wall that might help them to continue to feed is the strategy here. So giving them more confidence and more blessings and moving up into a large rub can be daunting for a snake. So putting in a hide can help them make the adjustment. So it's something that we're gonna experiment with and see. We haven't put anything, any hides in any animals that are feeding particularly well at the moment, are comfortable. The dream schools are very comfortable, we've left them, but we can always bring that on later as an additional bolt on. So always have something up your sleeve, as us magicians would like to always mention. But let's have a look at Xena and see how she's looking. And then she's gone straight into her hide. Look at how confident and how happy she is, Jack. Is she gorgeous? Yeah. So let's um, let's just weigh her and see how she's doing. Again, we bought her in at um, 250 to 300 grams six months ago. And she eats once a week. Magnificent specimen. She's het for albino, Jared. And her future husband is actually a albino 100% het clown, isn't he? Which we have, and we'll show you him as well. But let's just put her on the scales. I'm going to say 1250. Yeah. Do you think so? 1219, so not far out at all, Jared. At all. So I think she's doing magnificent. A wonderful animal. We shall return you to your hide in peace. There we go, darling. You see how she's enjoying the hide, Jared? Lovely. So, I'll just put her there. Just wash my hands. She's our super gravel female. She's created her own hide, so we haven't put in another hide in for her. And we'll weigh her and see how she's doing, Jared. She's having a nice little nap. Sorry to disturb you, Electra. And let's just have a look at the super gravel girl. Oh, Jared, she's absolutely superb. Again, a very good eater. She's always a good eater from day one, wasn't she? Magnificent animal. I'm going to say 1350 with this one. Should we see? You're kidding. 1557. Electra, my darling. <laughs> what are you doing? How are you getting so big? She's almost at the breedable weight. I don't think she's sexually mature though, Joe. So we might just hold back for a few more months, even though she has hit the target. And of course she has fed and she's digested food but she'll poo in a couple of days and lose about 50 grams so we can discount some of this weight in empty weight they call it and you really want to be going off the empty weight for breeding purposes but a magnificent animal jared and to take her from 250 to 1550 in less than a year is absolutely incredible Just, and that's not without power feeding either that's pure once a week taking small rat once a week now isn't she lovely Right, we'll put you back, my darling Electra. Leave you in peace. Would you like to show them the male of the albino clown, Jared? Yazoo. Let's see how he's doing. I think he's in shed, he's actually. In shed, yeah. he's in shed. So the last one I was going to share with us, Jared, was um, Stormy, Jess's snake. The game we bought her in 150 a year or so ago. And uh, just trying to find out where she is, really. She's right there, thank you. She's enjoying her hide, look. And I think we did weigh her earlier, didn't we? I think she was weighing in at 
think when we cleaned her we weighed her was she about 1300 grams so again she's not far off being breedable Jared so there's some wonderful things here and we've also got the two desert ghosts that have gone up and we've had a look at those and weighed them this morning didn't we Jared and where do we put those beautiful desert ghosts over here so we've got Isa, who's the desert ghost Enchi, 100% het caramel. She's the female. Is she using her hide? Yes, we've given her a hide. Let's have a little peek. There she is. Isn't she lovely? And I think she weighed in at about, was it 1100 grams down? So that's the female. We're bringing her on nicely. So thank you to Marco for producing such a lovely snake. And this is her husband Rambo, who's the same genes. And we'll see, he's also put on a lot of weight, Jared. He's 1100 too. And is he using his hide? Yes, he is. So they do like their hides, Jared. Gives them more confidence, more security. So I think on that note, I'd like to discuss the purposes of a hide and the benefits of a hide. Would you like to come and join me, Jared, as we talk about this? Do we have much time at all? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <coughs> Perfect. Do take a chair, Jared. Rest those weary legs. sharing your collection with me today. Did enjoy that and I hope you, your subscribers would enjoy watching and seeing a few snakes and their progress. Now of course, let's just discuss the benefits of a high Jared and obviously I'm not going to ask you too many questions because of your sore throat. But um, when I first got into the hobby many years ago, about 18 months for me, you were mentioning how important it was to have a hide for these animals and you always had hides in the house and since we came into here we haven't been using them as much because of the closed facilities and we can create and simulate darkness here. But certain animals do actually naturally go into hides for protective reasons, for other reasons, to be at peace and to feel settled and I think sometimes even humans like solitude. Now that reminds me of uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, natural instincts of a hobbit and they often live in the hills don't they and there's a reason for that Jared they like to be in touch with nature but they also like the privacy of their home and they like their food very much they eat five or six times a day I understand which is uh, quite a lot of meals they do enjoy their food but they do have that lovely desire to be peaceful in the Shire but um, I must tell you a story where you'll probably recall that um, there was a young hobbit that went fishing with his cousin and uh, his cousin caught this amazing big fish and it took him underwater with the rod and uh, it was so big it dragged him under the river and to his amazement he saw a gold ring that was shining in the bottom of the river. He let go of the fish and he grabbed it with his hand and brought it up and he managed to get himself on the bank and his cousin Smigel saw was hiding behind a tree and he saw what happened and unfortunately jealousy and envy kicked in very quickly for Smigel and he asked his cousin if he could have the ring for his birthday but he'd already received a present from his cousin and his cousin was adamant that this ring belonged to him because he found it fair and square but unfortunately Smigel was listening to a a dark voice within him that said that ring was designed for him and he convinced himself that because it was his birthday this gift was his and unfortunately as story tells he actually strangled his cousin to obtain the ring and then he was cast out by his family the Baggins and the family in the Shire were very upset to lose such a loved one 
and of course he became what we commonly now know as Gollum because he allowed this inner fight within himself, the dark side effectively, to um, affect his behaviour and he went into hiding. So when we're talking about Hyde's Jared, I think Gollum is a very classic example of where he found comfort in the dark, in darkness and found comfort. He actually went to the Misty Mountains and found in a deep dark cave an underwater stream that fed him fish. He was a very good fisherman. And it's a shame because he had so many good qualities, but he decided to follow his desire for power and envy. And when he placed the ring on his finger, he realized that he could take the strength of the invisibility of the ring. And he used to visit the village here very regularly, stealing food. No one knew it was him because he could come and go as he pleased. He even actually got back and used envy and he hurt and attacked some of the family members that had cast him out. They treated him with so much disrespect because of what he'd done, which is understandable because when you take life, it is a serious dilemma for people to forgive and move on. In fact, it's almost impossible. And uh, so part of, part of um, Gollum's problem was that he, because he wasn't helped with his issues and struggles, he was extricated and pushed away. He became more of a recluse and became comfortable with his own space. In fact, so comfortable that he actually started talking to himself. And as you'll notice if you watch the films, Jared, he became almost, people say that he was schizophrenic or is schizophrenic, meaning that he's constantly worried about things and over anxiety attacks and always worried about his own shadow and other things going on that may or may not be true or perceived to be true. But we think there's something much deeper going on with Gollum and there's one of the reasons I think that Lord of the Rings is so appealing to so many people is that they actually see part themselves in Gollum. Because I think all of us are fighting this battle within us. The battle between good and evil and being able to put to one side those evil tendencies and actually seek out the righteousness within each of us. There is a light within each of us that we must find. And uh, sometimes that journey is difficult and there's an internal battle going on every day with our choices that we make. So, with that end, since we only have a few minutes left, I'm gonna share a song with you. And hopefully this song will be um, appro appropriate because it's all about the importance of a hide and particularly for Gollum and it probably helps to explain why he was cast out and all the other implications. But let's finish with this. And it's, um, we have four minutes, Jared? Okay. So this is called Gollum's Song of Lyrics.
that was a beautiful song that depicts the internal battle that Gollum and Sagal had to go through and is going through and there's a lot of um, symbolism in that song that we can apply to our lives to help us overcome the evil and to let the good shine. So part two, thank you Jared for in your illness helping out with the snakes and soldiering on through this and we wish you well with your recovery Jared and hopefully you'll be back to full health soon. But um, part two will follow shortly and I might ask mother to come and help me with that to give you a chance to rest. So. Thank you so much and uh, we shall see you in part two, all, all, all things um, equal and hopefully it will happen, but uh, see you soon, bye bye for now.